everyone welcome back to grad girl rambles it's brianna here and today i'm doing my apa recap so last week was the apa um, 2022 convention and i got to go in person for the first time i have gone to gone to um the virtual conventions in 2020 and 2021 um, but this is my first time going in person because this is the first time it's been in person since 2019 before the pandemic. And uh, my original plan was to um, do like a sort of vlog situation. But as soon as I got there, I got so overwhelmed that I forgot to take any videos. So I'm just going to do a bit of a recap and probably put some pictures up on my face somewhere. Um... But it was really interesting to go in person because I've only been to the NASP um, convention, which is for school psychologists. And while that is big, it's not as big as APA because APA is every division, which is um, all the different areas of psychology, whereas NASP is just for school psychologists. So um, it was extremely overwhelming. But um, when I got there the first day, I got there on Wednesday because I am um, on the APAGS convention committee. And what that means is um, we did some programming specific for graduate students, but we had to get there early um, just to make sure everything was set up. So we um, registered, we signed in, and we got these bags, which I'm sure looks the same every year, just the the... Um, year changes but this was the bag that they gave us I also got this little pin there we go oh ignore my nail this little pin which just says APAG's um, psychology student leader on it which was really cool um, and it was just a really good time so we we got in and did our prep stuff made sure everything was in its place and then um, the next day was when it started. I did um, renew my membership for APA. So I got to pick out a shirt from the APA store and I picked this one. It's a little Stroop Test nerdness. Um, but I really love this shirt and I'm glad I picked it out. Um, but yeah, it was really cool to get to see all these different psychologists and grad students and people in other related fields come together for this like massive um, convention. I think in typical years I've heard there have been 10 to 15,000 people in attendance and I think this year there were probably about 5,000 so it was definitely a lot smaller than it has been in the past. I can't even imagine what it would look like if there were the um, normal amount of people. But what was really nice is that APA was really dedicated to making sure that it was safe um, and we were taking COVID precautions. So um, before registering, everyone had to um, verify that they've been vaccinated. And then once you verify you're, you've been vaccinated, you get like this thing on your phone and they will not let you into the convention center unless you have like the little scan on your phone. And then we were all wearing masks um, the entire time. Um, I wasn't sure how much it would be enforced just because I've seen pictures from other conferences and it looked like people were saying that it wasn't really being enforced, but I don't know who they hired, but the people were very, um, they were taking their job seriously. If you were not taking a picture with someone or shoving food in your mouth, you were being reprimanded for, to put your mask back on. So, um, it, it alleviated some of the COVID stress. It was still there, but I felt a little bit um, more comfortable knowing that they were very serious. Like, only vaccinated people can come to this, and you're still going to be masked up while you're here. So, I appreciate that. Um, I presented a poster, which I'll show a picture somewhere here, um, with my research team. Um, we presented on... Um, a poster related to my assistantship, which is a, um, it was a psychometric poster, which I also wasn't sure how that was going to go because psychometrics, while exciting for some people, not so much for others. Um, but it went really well. Um, the link to the poster will be in the description if you're interested and you can let me know if you have any questions about it. Um, but that was also fun because I haven't presented a poster in person since undergrad. I had a poster at APA last year, 
but it was virtual and I didn't do the like office hours option where you can just sit on Zoom and hope people come ask you questions. I just uploaded a PDF to the, um, the website and like that was it. So it was also just nice to be in the poster section with all the posters and getting to talk people to, mm, and getting to talk to people about the poster in real time was really cool. Um, I also got to meet a lot of my Twitter, internet colleagues, I'll say, um, one of whom was um, Stephanie Campbell, who is now Dr. Stephanie Campbell, um, who did um, the APIC um, video series with me last year. Um, so she is done and is starting her postdoc soon, but I had never met her in person and we've probably been talking online for a year or two, which was really exciting to meet her. And then I got to meet a lot of other um, students who I interact with pretty regularly on Twitter. Um, here's a picture. I don't know. Um, and that it was just so weird because we have been talking on Twitter and um, for some of them we've been doing these co-working groups on Zoom throughout this summer. So um, it went from just chatting online to oh, let's work on our dissertations at the same time on Zoom to meeting in person, which was really fun. Um, I also grabbed a couple of books while I was there. Um, one of them I did buy. It's the 52 Simple Mindfulness Practices to Slow Down, Relieve Stress, and Nurture. Nourish. Nourish the Spirit. This is by Katherine Polan Orzek. And this is a book that I definitely need. Um, I always need help slowing down and mindfulness is not something that I have had great success with in the past. So trying to, you know, achieve mindfulness a different way is something that hopefully this book will help me do. And the APA bookstore toward the end of the conference was giving away free books. All you have to do was sign up for their newsletters and honestly I think I'm already signed up for the newsletters that I like re-signed up for. So I got a couple more books. I got Child and Adolescent Development and Cultural Context which is very important to the work that I do. And then this is actually a kids book, Home for a While. Um, it's about a little boy in the foster system who um, is afraid to um, connect with and love the um, foster parents that he's lived with. And at the end of the story, um, spoiler alert, he learns to open his heart to them and vice versa. But um, I thought that was um, a good book for me to get, especially because I do a lot of work with early childhood and like emotion regulation and feelings and things like that. So I feel like I should also be building my, um, my um, collection of books for the young kids. Yeah, I just feel like it was a whirlwind of a weekend and I'm kind of sad that I didn't really get to explore Minneapolis more. Um, there was just a lot of things that I had to do for APAGs and also just going to the sessions that I was really interested in. Um, the day that I wanted to actually explore Minneapolis was Saturday and that is when it was just like pouring rain all day so I didn't get to do that but we went to a couple of food spots near the hotel which was nice and um yeah it was really cool to be there and see um some of the great work that people are doing um in different areas of psychology and I also got to see um my old PI from um, when I worked at Kennedy Krieger and I saw one of my friends who I used to work with at Kennedy Krieger who is now um, working on the project that I was on. So I also got to see them present um, about that, which is always, it's really cool being able to see um, some of the research that, you know, when you were an RA, you've seen how it's kind of evolved over time. And, um, and it's nice that there are people that I know who are still working on those projects. So, yeah. But overall, I would give the APA convention, I'll give it, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10 only because I feel like there, there was a lot that I missed. Um, I think it was a really good convention for me. I did what I came to do, which was present my poster, do the APAC stuff, and meet a bunch of people. So i um, feeling pretty good about that and I'm looking forward to it next year because next year it'll be in D.C. Um, 
which is exciting because I'm from Maryland, so it's nice and close by. But yeah, I'm, I'm feeling, I was feeling exhausted, but also kind of like rejuvenated, which is a weird dichotomy. I just, I feel like my, maybe my legs were tired, but I was inspired to, um, do different lines of research, which are still connected to what I'm doing, but I also don't have time to do that, but, um, just something to keep in the back of my mind, and, um, it was nice getting to see people who, um, I knew from Twitter, but, you know, getting to see them in person was really nice. Joke's on me for not vlogging any of it, that's okay, I did a recap, there are a bunch of, um, people on Instagram who've done some reels of their experience at APA, so um, I've been enjoying watching those. Now that APA is over, I do have to um, get back into the swing of work things. I'm still working on my dissertation proposal, um, planning to um, defend the proposal this fall um, ahead of my internship um, APIC application. So, that's where my focus is now. EPA is over and I'm back at school. So that is all and I will see y'all later. Bye.